Shalom Aleichem, everyone. So, I wanted to clarify some concepts in, uh, in Judaism. I think the, it can help a lot. So first of all, let's talk about the concept that calls revenge, nekama. What is revenge? So the one that's supposed to revenge is Hashem, the Creator Himself. We're not supposed to revenge. That's first of all. So take it off, away from your list of obligations, your commitments. You don't need to do it. It's written, Cherev Hashem Mal Adam, there's gonna be a sword that belongs to the Creator, that will be full with blood, let him do that thing, okay? Kel nekamot Hashem, kel nekamot ofia, the Creator Himself, He will revenge, He will appear, He will come, He will do whatever. If you want to discuss that as well, I can explain to you what will happen, but it's not our job, okay? So first of all, we clarify that. It's not our job to revenge, because you can never know who reve you're revenging, who you're fighting with, we have a different mission in our life. Our mission is to reveal the light, the unbelievable light of the Creator, the such high and beautiful, gorgeous, awesome, fantastic, special, unique, colorful, shiny light of the Creator. That's what our life is all about. So one of my students today asked me a question. Is it wrong to to be angry in 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 all all times in all the in all the places like always cannot be angry? So I answered the only place that it's written that it is allowed to be angry is to be angry on your own evil inclination. You can be upset on the fact that you have an evil inclination, but not to be upset on yourself, to be upset on your Yetzirah. So that's the only anger that is allowed. And all the rest of the angers, on that it's written, that everyone that is angry is silly, is foolish, acting foolish. And it's written that kol koes that every person that is angry, chokhmato mistareket mimeno, his wisdom is running away from him. He stands empty, full. And then it's written that every person that doesn't have the wisdom and he is silly, so he's walking in darkness. So, and except of that it's written also that Kol koes, every person that is angry, so all kinds of hell, all kinds of demons and ghosts and, 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 and judgments and all kinds of, of husks and, 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 and imaginations controlling him. He gives himself over to the hands of his evil inclination. And for people like us, the worst thing that can happen to a person that is angry is that he's losing his financials, his money. All of his money is going away, so don't do it. <laughs> Why? You're working so hard, <laughs> collecting one dollar and another dollar, piling your dollars, and in the end, one time you, ah, and ah, you just lost few hundred, few thousands of dollars. It's not worth it. Call me Negel, Nom Shaltinbo. All kinds of hell control that person that is angry. So. Okay, but let's face it, I have my angers, I need to get an advice on how to work on them and not just a rebuke, oh, don't be angry. Oh. Like, I don't know that it's damaging me. I know that it's damaging me, but I need an advice. So, the advice is to breathe. The verse is saying, we're asking from Hashem Barach Berogez, when you're upset, when you're angry, please remember to have mercy on us. And 
you cannot ask from someone else to do something if you're not trying, if you're not planning at least to try to do the same. So when you're angry, when you're upset, just try to put in mind that that other person might need mercy, some understanding. Maybe there is something that is hard for you to recognize that is going on with that person that makes him so stressed and so confused and so lost that he's upsetting you now. Hashem Barach loves him as well. In every situation in our lives we need to remember that the Creator, He did not create it only us. He created a very colorful and huge and great world with many, many creations, many, many animals and species and, and, and people on top of the creation. And all of those people are very, very important in the eyes of the Creator. A few days ago I saw two people that were arguing and, and, and insulting each other and I was speaking to one of them after, after it and I, I told him, you know, if you had your reasons to be angry, to fight with him, so okay, I, maybe I can, I can hear you, I would love to hear you if you want to talk, I would love to hear, but I might even understand you why you were angry, but I want you to know that Rahmana Libabai, that the Creator, He is asking for your heart. Just ask yourself if in that time that you were fighting, was your heart straight? Were you honest while you were fighting? When you're angry, when you're upset, it's very easy to jump and to start doing other things that are not coming as a straight result of your anger. Like to shame the person that is standing in front in front of you, to to rebuke, to 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 get harder on him, to take advantage of his weakness in time of fight or whatever, to mock him, to laugh at him, to accuse him, and other things, to bring out on him other things that are making you stressful and upset and lost and confused. And now in that time, you have an opportunity to bring out more of your steam, of your of your pressure. It's not his fault, but you cannot control it in the time of anger. So that's why we need to be as strong as we can to hold ourselves back from getting angry at all in the first place. The Creator, He wants the heart. And with our heart, what that we can accomplish and achieve is things that a person cannot even, cannot even dream about. Now, for Many of, of, of my friends, of my, my, my students, my followers, so when they're looking at me, so they see a regular person, and I am a regular person. But what is so special? That you cannot see my inside. What can you see? You can see my outside. You're looking, you see that I lost my hair in the war, in the war of aging. You can see that I still hold my side curls. You can see that I have beard, that I'm dressing like a penguin. You can see many things. Okay, great, you can see. But you don't know what goes on inside of my heart. So you cannot really know who am I and what is the level that I achieved in my effort of serving the Creator. You don't know. You can never know who I really am, what is my real level. Why am I... Extend, expand, expanding my speech on that so much that you're going to understand about your yourselves as well that you still don't know how much you can achieve if you would see Moshe Rabbeinu standing in front of you I promise to you right now that it's not so sure that you will be able to recognize that that is Moshe Rabbeinu the main prophet of our nation, the prophet, the biggest prophet of all the prophets of all the nations, the person that saw Hashem, that spoke with Hashem face to face, pay pay, mouth to mouth. We cannot understand his level, but I promise you that, that if you would see him crossing the street in front of you, it's not for granted that you would recognize him, that you would say, oh, that's Moshe. No, you don't know. King David, even Shmuel, the prophet, he was the chosen prophet to crown King David, to crown the king of Israel. When he went to the house of Ishai, the father of King David, he couldn't re recognize King David. 
He made, if I'm not wrong, nine mistakes on the way because King David had nine siblings, nine brothers, I think. I might be wrong in the numbers. But something like that. It was a blessed family, a blessed from from birth family. And he was wrong. He saw the first one and he looked to, to, in the eyes of Shmuel Anavi, Shmuel the Prophet. And Shmuel the Prophet is a prophet that was in the level of Moshe ve'Aharon, Moses and Aaron together, he was com been compared to them. And on him it's been said, Shmuel HaRo'e, that he was able to see. He had that power of seeing things clearly. But when he went to recognize the King of Israel, the eternal Mashiach of our nation, of the world, he couldn't. He made all the, of the potential mistakes on the way. The eldest brother looked the best, he chosen him first. When he realized that it's not him, he went to the second. Oh, he looked so heroic and strong and powerful and wise and gifted, but it was not him. And then the third and the fourth and the fifth, all wrong, 100% mistake, until Hashem brought him and, what? That? Yes. Sorry to disappoint you. You can't see with your eyes. You think you can see. Also when you look at yourself, I'm telling you that. And why am I telling you that? Because I went through so much in my life and I achieved such amazing things in my life that I can tell you from my life experience without exposing everything, without telling you everything that I went through and spiritual things that I achieved, that I started my process of tshuva as a regular Baal tshuva. I born in a secular family, I was not keeping Shabbat, I was not eating kosher, I was not doing anything right. I did all the mistakes. I sinned in every sin that, 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 possible, that was possible for me. I, I, I couldn't care less. The Torah was not available for me at all. I didn't care about that at all. I did everything and I did it my way and I was happy about it. And then I started doing tshuva and I started baby steps with all the mistakes of about tshuva. I made many, many mistakes. I went to learn in the wrong places. I was consulting with the wrong rabbis. I followed people that pretended to be righteous and they were not. I made all the mistakes that about tshuva can make. All of your mistakes and more. I did. And I did it my way and I was happy. And I was wrong. And I hurt my wife's emotion and I pushed my children too much and I was rebuking and arguing and fighting and I... But I was doing tshuva all the way. Like every time that I realized, okay, Dror, you're wrong, so I did tshuva on that. Then I start over and I haven't stopped doing tshuva until today. Today I did tshuva. Every day I'm doing tshuva. So that tshuva that I'm doing is purifying me, is healing me, is fixing me straightening me up, bringing me to the right path. So now I can tell you, after something like 20 years of doing seriously tshuva, serious tshuva, trying the best that I can, but not forgetting all of the mistakes, and not forgetting all of the lackings and the weaknesses and the failures, and also my laziness on top of that, and, and the rest of my, 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 my issues that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. I'm a regular person. But I must tell you that I achieved things until today that I can promise to you that it's in your potential to achieve the same as well. If you're just going to do your, your thing in life and if you're going to believe that what that you do is important in the eyes of Hashem. Because if you're going to believe in yourselves, you're going to be believed. You, people will be able to, to enjoy from the fruits of, 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 of your effort. Only if you're going to believe in your merchandise, only if you're going to believe in what that you're bringing. If now you're bringing to Hashem Barach, Kain and Hevel, both of them came to sacrifice the sacrifice. So Kain bought the best sheep, he bought, brought the best things that he could, he brought the finest products that he had. Great, but uh, he didn't brought it with the right intention. He didn't brought it with a pure heart. So Hashem Baruch did not accept his sacrifice. But Hevel, he brought something so cheap and so small and so tiny, but he really brought it from the heart. So Hashem Baruch came and accept that sacrifice of Hevel only because of the intention. So when you have faith and you have the right intention, what that you can achieve 
are, are, are things that are beyond this world. And I'm telling you that for a purpose, for a reason. The purpose is that you must realize that your potential is so high and amazing. And it's not depends in the number of hours that you can learn Torah a day or in the number of hours that you can go to the field and pray like Avraham Avinu, like, like the, 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 the Breslev or Hasidim, I don't know what. No, it not depends on that. It depends only in the intention of your heart, in the honesty of your heart, in the purification of your heart, in how you want your heart to be purified, how honest you are, how strong you are with going with the truth of the Creator. Now if the Creator brought someone in front of you and now that person is embarrassing you, he's breaking you, he's insulting you, he's shaming you, stop, relax, breathe, have patience. That's the advice that we asked before. Okay, I realize I have my defects, I have my angers, now I need an advice, not a rebuke, please help me, give me an advice how I'm going to get out from my anger. So okay, in the time of anger you need to remember that it's time to have mercy. The Creator now brought a person in front of you and that person made you angry, that person now is rebuking you, that person now is annoying you, that person now is cutting you while you're driving, that person now is cutting you in line. That person now took something that you thought it was yours. Wait, breathe for one second. First of all, put into your mind that there is nothing except of the Creator. Now Hashem Barach did that thing. Now, do I need to react? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You just need really to ask yourself that question and not to react as a result of your anger, not to explode on that person with nothing that can hold you back. No, that is the worst thing that can take place. But the world is standing by the merit of those people that can hold themselves in time of anger. Like that it's written, Olam Omed Al Blima, the world is, sta is standing, means existing, by the merit of those people that can hold themselves in time of anger, in time of fight. Now, what is the challenge? To stop in time of fight? No. That everyone can achieve. To remember that now after that you achieved it and you hold yourself back and you didn't scream back and you didn't rebuke back and you didn't fight back, now by your merit, the world is existing. Now I want you to be happy. I want you to believe in that. Now can it be that thousands and thousands of kindergartens in the world, in the wide world, millions of children that are playing now in the sand, in Plato, building puzzles, they're reading in children books, they're all happy, they're laughing, they're singing songs. In different many cultures, the nations in the world, around the world, Billions of people are eating and singing and talking and chatting and resting and showering and going to the beach and going out with their pets and, and, and having fun and then and, and I don't know what, so hearing music, playing music, all of that by your merit. Do you believe in that? That's your problem. You don't believe in the greatness of the Creator that every second someone else is keeping the world exist. And sometimes it's you, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's him. But if you're always going to go chasing yourself, blaming yourself, slaughtering yourself, hating yourself, executing yourself on your mistakes, okay, great, you know what? Half of the pie you achieved, you're right, kill yourself. Okay, but also there is resurrection of the dead. You need to revive yourself as well. Have mercy! Okay, you killed yourself, that's your way of doing tshuva. Okay, shoot yourself in the head. Now come and heal yourself after it. You need to. It's part of your obligation to believe in the mercy, in the kindness of the Creator that is endless, that it's an unconditional love, love that not depends in anything. Now, as a Creator that loves you so much, He can give you gifts that you cannot estimate that you cannot measure and you need to open your eyes and to realize that you don't understand what it means to keep the mitzvot what it means to be honest what it means to be a person of truth 
You cannot realize the greatness, the level that you can achieve by just following your heart, following your honesty, your good attributes, your good will, just being nice, just being kind. The holy righteous man, the famous Baal Shem Tov Akadosh, that he was also from the seed of King David, he said once that it's good enough for a person to come in a lifetime to this world and even if he will be the worst sinner that will sin all of his life, he will not going to keep Torah mitzvot at all, he will never going to keep Shabbat, he will never once in his life won't eat kosher food, only not kosher food, only. He will never going to learn Torah, not even one word of Torah in his lifetime, he won't do anything that is connected to Torah mitzvot, but one time in his life, and that's going to be his only good act. Think about a worst person can, cannot be described going to be a person like that. Didn't do anything except of one physical favor that he did in his lifetime to another person in the world. What does it mean? He went into a store, into a grocery store, supermarket. The door was about to close. He went into the elevator. The door was about to close. There was a poor person, someone that he didn't care about. You know what? It was a beautiful woman and his intention was corrupt. He did it only for himself. But bottom line, what did he did was a favor for that person to hold the doors open for one more second, that that person will not going to be hit by the, by the door. The Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh said, it's good enough for that person to come down to this world, to sin so much, and then to be judged on all of his sins in court in heaven, to be punished for years on years in hell, to be burnt in the flaming fire of hell, for thousands of years, I cannot even think about how many years he's going to be, have to be toasted in heaven. And then to enjoy the reward that he deserved on that physical favor that he one time in his life did for another person. So it's a Baal Shem Tov that said that, not me. Not Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that people are fighting all over him. We're talking about the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, the head of the Hasidut. We're talking about the main rabbi of all the dynasty of Chabad, of all the dynasty of Breslev, of Gur, of, of, of Vizhnitz, of Satmer, all the Hasiduyot, all the... How do you say Hasiduyot? There is an English word for Hasiduyot? Nothing. They're so hidden. Hasidic sects. Hasidic, what? Sects. Sects. Okay. Those ones. He is the main rabbi of all of those groups. Sects. And he was the one that said that it's worth it for you even to be punished on all of your mistakes in the world to come. That in the end of that journey, you will be able to enjoy from the amazing bounty, the reward that you, you will receive on that favor that you made for one person, one time in your life. So now, great, we don't want to be toasted in, in, in hell for thousands of years. Think about all the good things that you did in your lifetime. How many favors, how many conversations that you had with people, how many good advice, how many coins you gave to for charity until today, how many dollars, how many shekels, how much money you gave until today, because everything is collected for you. How many words of Torah you said until today, how many good will you had until today. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that there is a certain unique place that it's like a step that is clear, no one can see it, and it's hanged, it's standing, in the air that is above hell. And when there is a certain person that he is a complete sinner, that sinned all of his life, but one time in his lifetime, he thought maybe to do tshuva. He didn't do tshuva. In the end, he did not do tshuva. He did not regret on his sin. He was the worst sinner that sinned all of his life, just Zohar HaKadosh. It's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It's not even the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. 
Yes, the honor of Meron Mountain. Okay, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So him to blame on that Hasidic word. He said that it's written in the Zohar Kadosh. There is a clear step in the air. It's hanged above the flaming fire of hell, and that step is ready for that person that sinned all of his life, never kept no mitzvah. And one time in his life, he thought maybe he will do tshuva. He wanted to do tshuva in a way, but in the end he didn't do tshuva. He did not do tshuva. He did not regret, did not confess on his mistakes. Never. And then when he will fall into the flaming fire while he gonna be in the air realizing what's now about to happen to him, he will fall on that step. And he won't reach hell and he will have another opportunity now to do tshuva. Who will not gonna do tshuva in that moment? Now he's about to do tshuva and Hashem is giving that opportunity to a person that never did tshuva once in his life, never regret on no mistake, on no sin. Hashem is so merciful, so kind that He will give the person an opportunity to regret even after death. We cannot understand the greatness, the, 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 the loving kindness of the Creator. It's impossible to understand. So how many times you regret on your sins? So how many opportunities you still have to fix? And you must believe in that. You must follow that light of hope. That is the real light that comes out to the world by the merit of the real righteous people. They are those ones that gives us hope, that gives us strength, that helps us to realize that we can fix and if not, the Creator wouldn't bring us down to this world again if He wouldn't have that opportunity to fix. But we need to believe in that. If you have a tool and you don't believe in the power of that tool, you're not going to use it. If you have a weapon and you don't believe in that weapon, you're not going to use it. If you have money and you don't believe, you're not going to use it. If you're not aware to the tools that you got, that the gifts that you received from heaven, you're never going to use them. The Gemara is saying that a person that regret on one sin, they're going to erase all of his sins. They're going to atone on all of his crimes. So now I'm asking you, if you now sinned, you made a mistake today and you felt bad with yourself, can you believe that now because that you felt regret on that sin, on that mistake, you were talking bad about one person, you were thinking bad about one person, you had any kind of negative thought in your mind and you regret on that thought. You feel bad with that negative thought. You said something wrong to someone, you hurt someone's feeling and you feel regret on that. Now I'm asking you, do you believe in that Gemara that is explaining to you that if you regret on one sin, they're going to erase all of your sins? Be honest. It's hard. We don't have faith. That's how far we are from faith. Faith is in the Creator is not only to be religious. It's not only to be ridiculous, re religious. It's not only that. It's not only that. It's also that you need to believe that you're, command you're commanded from heaven to keep Shabbat, to eat kosher, to put filin, to cover your head. Great, you need to believe in all of that. But you also need to believe in the Creator, that He is merciful, that He is kind, that He loves you with no borders, with no limitations with no end, that there is no end to His loving kindness, that His love is love with no borders, with no rule, just He loves you free love. That's how He loves. And you, if you want to be a real believer, that's, that's what Emunah is all about, that's what faith is all about. That you're gonna believe in Hashem Barach in the nights, in the darkness. You don't need to believe in the daylight 
that, oh, I believe it's the sun. You don't need to believe. You can see it's the sun. You know it's the sun. That's the sun. Okay, here's the sun. Here comes the sun. You don't need to believe in that. You know it. But you need to believe in the things that you don't know. You need to believe that it's made out of fire. Great. Oh, that you need to believe. Why? Because someone told you that, but you never touched it. You can feel it. You never been there, thank God. So you can tell that it's made out of... No, someone said, I believe him. You believe him. Great. That's faith. Faith is only in the places that you cannot reach. So where we need to believe? In the places that are all dark for us. When you're angry, you need to believe that there is a purpose for that situation. And if you're going to believe, you won't be angry anymore. When you need to believe that Hashem will support you, when you're full with money, when you have all the luxuries in the world, then you need to, oh, Hashem is supporting me. You don't need to believe. You can see that. You can see you have money. Hashem gave you money. You can see that. You don't need to believe. But when you don't have money and in a couple of hours you need to pay your bills, you need to pay your rent, then you need faith. Then you need to count on Hashem. That's the mission. That's part of our mission. To believe. And to believe in what? To believe that there is no one except of Hashem. That's only half of our faith. To believe that enod mil vado, that there is no one except of Hashem, it's only half of faith. It's not complete faith. Complete faith it's also to know that there is no one except of Him and that He is the King and the Ruler and also that everything that He is doing, He is doing for the best because He is the good, because He is the source of all good. That's all, that all of this world is planned already before the creation took place. The Creator was planning and thinking and planting and, 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 and building and, and designing and creating the world from complete zero, that it will be perfect to the right ending, the complete redemption of the wide world, not only the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation's gonna, nation going to just run like crazy in the days of redemption and going to help and heal and support and, and, and rescue and help all the rest of the world. We're we not meant to rest in this world. It's not part of our mission to rest in this world. We're going to rest in peace in the world to come. In this world, we need to run. That's our obligation. We're obligated to run. When the redemption will take place, when from heaven the Creator will declare, that's it, it's time, it's time of redemption, what that will happen is that you're going to have millions of people to help them, to help them, to wake them up, to help them to come and to believe in the Creator. You're going to have to run and to hold hands of thousands of thousands of people and to provide wisdom. And how are you going to provide something that you don't own? Something that you don't have. That's why we're obligated to work on ourselves. That's why we're obligated to put into our hearts how great and good and nice the Creator is. Even when it's dark, especially when it's dark. Especially when you cannot recognize the loving kindness of the Creator. In times of judgments, in times of exile. That's when you need to believe in Hashem. When you don't know, when you're not so sure, when you have doubts, when you have questions, that's the time to believe. And how you can believe? The faith depends in the mouth of the person. You must talk to the Creator. If you would believe that there is a Creator to the world, you would talk to Him. If you believe that you have a friend, you're talking to Him. When you're stuck in the highway with flat tire and you believe that that person is your friend, you're calling Him. But if you would believe that you have a friend in heaven, someone that can create a new spare tile, that can create a, a, a ride back home, that can create the best friend to stop just, oh, you don't know, I just came here, just a coincidence and Hashem can make all of those coincidences take place exactly in the right time, like opening the Red Sea in the middle of the... the, the the, the war just for us when we're standing over there and he can do those things so you would call him wouldn't you <laughs> why are you not calling him you don't believe in him 
You believe in your friends, you believe in your lawyer, you believe in your doctor, you believe in your wife, in your husband, in your children, you believe in, in a truck that will take your car, you believe in other things. You have faith in foreign places. Instead of having faith in the source of creation, in the Creator Himself. Now when you're stuck, you need to lift your eyes to the Creator and to speak with Him and to open your heart and to share. Because you're lost in so many cases, in so many ways. You're lost with your wife, you're lost with your children, you're lost with yourself, you're lost with your tshuva, you're lost with your learning, you're lost with your holiness, you're lost with your eating habits, you're lost with your sleeping habits, you're lost with your way of prayer, you're lost with your ibadudut, you're lost with, with, with buying shoes, with, with wearing pants, with going out to the streets, with, with your job place, with your career, with your future, with your fears, with your anxieties, with your stress, with your pressure, with all of your dreams, with your childhood, with your father, with your mother. You're lost in all of those cases and why in the world the Creator made you so lost? Why? Why? Look at this, at, at, the, at, at the forest, look at the animals, look at the desert, look at the animals walking in the savanna. They couldn't care less about anything, they're thirsty, they're walking somewhere, oh, hopefully they're gonna find some water. You're not gonna see them sweating for nothing. They're hungry, okay, immediately they're taking their head down to the ground, looking for some grass, whatever. Don't start looking for grass, please. <laughs> you don't see them worried, why? Why Hashem Barach made us to be so poor? They need water, they just need to find the lake, okay, that, 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 that is something that they can do. They need to eat, okay, grass they can find easily. When you need to drink, it's a project. It's a project. You need to have clean water, you need to have a faucet, you need to have a sink, you need to have a cup. You need to dip that cup in the mikveh before that you will be able to use that cup. You need to say bracha on that cup. You need to, okay, great, cup of water, what I was asking. You need to eat, okay, so now you need to have a stove, you need to have a, a, an oven, you need to have a pan, pot, plates. Forks, knives, food, you need to go to, 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 to buy in groceries, kosher food, oh, domestic problems. Well, how are you going to deal with it? Why Hashem Barach made us like that? Every animal can just go to the forest like she born to the world. You need to have underpants and, and pants and shirts and skirts for women and jackets and a hat and a kippah and gloves and it's winter, a scarf. Shoes and socks, that, why? Belt. Why Hashem Barach made life so complex for us? That we're going to call Him. That's the only reason. The animals, they're calling Him naturally. They're just screaming to Him. But from us, He wants us to pray. So you have so many challenges, you have so many difficulties, you have so many problems because Hashem wants you to talk to Him on every single one of those issues. He wants you to be able to admit that you cannot drink without Him helping you. That you cannot wear your jacket without Him supplying and providing what that you need. That you cannot eat without Him, that you cannot sleep without Him, that you cannot rest without Him, that you cannot breathe without Him. That's why He's talking to you. That's why He's showing to you through your lackings that you're going to recognize that you are lost. And while understanding that you're lost, you're not going to lose your mind because of that if you're going to work on your faith. Because then you're going to have a solution to every single one of your problems and you're going to solve everything. And you're going to be a happy camper. You're just going to be happy. You're going to walk from one situation to the next and you're going to smile to yourself. You're going to be happy while showering because you're going to shower with Hashem. You're going to be happy while eating because you're going to dine and eat with Hashem. You're going to be happy choosing a jacket because you're going to know that you're doing it with Hashem. And when you're with Hashem, you're happy. And when you're lost and confused and you lack of all of those things and you don't have a clue how to fill your vessels because you're empty and you're empty in this and in that and in that and in that and you don't know what to do, you're so poor, you're so lost, so confused, you don't know what to do. So if you don't know what to do, you need to call Hashem. You need to call Hashem, call Hashem al -amayim. you need to call Hashem on the water, <laughs> you need to call Hashem always. 
You need to call Hashem in every situation in your life. If you have peace in your house, it's not because you're so wise. It's not because you're buying flowers for Shabbat. It's not because you're an amazing cook and it's not because you're giving compliments. It's only because that the Creator decided to give you peace, to let you breathe. It's not because you're wise and not a genius and not a very nice person. You're not. It's all nonsense. You're not. Face it. You're not. Face it. You're okay. You're not that nice to have Shalom by. You're not. You're okay. But the Shemit Barach helps you. Shemit Barach reveals His loving kindness on you to show you that He's with you. When you're humble, you realize, I'm not that nice, I'm not that grateful, I'm not that gentle, I'm not that sensitive, but still I have Shalom Bayit, but still my wife, she's talking to me and she's nice to me. Okay, so something is wrong here, how can it be? It's the loving kindness of the Creator. She's supposed to hate me, right? She's supposed to run after me with a, with a, with a, with a hammer. But she's not, so something is wrong here. What is so wrong? Hashem it barach. The twisted life that, that it will fit to my bent shape. And now my wife, she's happy, even that I'm so, as I know that I am. And you're doing tshuva and you're coming closer to Hashem. But all of that conversation started for me trying to tell you, if you're going to believe in yourselves, you're going to find the treasures that the Creator treasured inside of you. For an example, today we don't know what oranges are all about. You have that fruit, it's tasty, delicious, you can eat it, you can enjoy from it, great. But the truth is that we still have not investigated that fruit completely to know exactly what we can bring out from that fruit. Okay, lettuce. Okay, it's great. You can put it in your salad, you can eat it, it's tasty, people realize it's healthy. Some uses we know that you can eat. Okay, great. But the truth is that still we don't know the real answer to which sicknesses lettuce is. Like, it can heal a person in a second, but who and when and how, we don't know yet. You have some kind of, of, of Eastern um, doctors, whatever, they have some higher wisdom, some big doctor, science are investigating and they can tell you more about it. But the truth is that on the most simple things in the world, still we don't know what is their use, what is the purpose of, of their creation, what's going to happen from the combination of certain particles with other particles. We know a little bit about medicines. We don't know the real truth about it. But when the wisdom will be revealed, so then Hashem will tell us all the secrets. And then we're going to know exactly how to heal ourselves from all of our illnesses, from all of our sicknesses, from all of our weaknesses. You're just going to use the right medicines, the right potions for everything that you need. Now about yourself, I'm telling you, you don't know even 3% of who you are. You don't know almost anything about yourself. You don't know who your true self is. You don't know what you're all about. You don't know what's the purpose of your creation in this world. You know that you're hungry. It's not you that is hungry. Your stomach is sending messages to your brain and okay, you feel hunger. Sometimes it's not even your stomach, it's your fears, it's your sadness, it's your depression, it's your stress, it's other things. It's not even hunger that calls you, I'm hungry. So you don't know even who you are. You don't know what you're able to achieve. And I'm telling you for my life experience that you can achieve such amazing things in life I'll tell you an example. I was sitting and now we came back from Florida. We've been there, a certain a, a couple wanted to, to speak with me. They came to, 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 to the place that we stayed and the woman, she started talking and asking me certain questions. My kids were there, they're very um, curious, Sakranim, with their ears like that. You need to, to see how they're putting the side girls behind their ears listening to my conversations and that woman is coming and she started asking me questions and I like I felt I'm listening to myself that's one of my qualities thank God thank Hashem I'm listening to my inner voice now she's talking and I'm listening to to, to my heart 
and I'm trying to understand what's going on in her life, why she's suffering. And she's talking and I hear and I listen and I'm listening to myself, to the voice of Hashem that is talking to me from inside. And then I'm asking her, I start asking her questions and she's saying yes. And I'm asking another question, do you have a problem with this? And she said yes. And I, do you have this problem? Oh yes. And you have that issue? And she says yes. And, and I'm getting inner and inner to the, to, the, to the problem. And then I ask you, do you have, um, the, and, and, and you must understand that, like, where am I bringing those, that information? I'm not working hard now thinking and I'm just listening to the voice of Hashem that is talking to me from inside. And I'm asking her, does your daughter have fears from, from puppets, from her dolls? And she said, yes, how do you know? Hundreds of puppets are wrapped in bags in, in our garage. I told her, okay, let's continue. Do you have some um, African masks hanged on, on your wall? No, in the beginning I told her you have something with idolatry. Idol and, and she said, no, I told her, yes, you do. So she said, we don't. I told her, you have something like art, like African masks hang on you. She said, how do you know? And then she's looking at her husband and she's telling him, he, he been into our house, he knows our house so well. I knew everything and I didn't share even 1% of what that I knew. And now you can call it divine, divine spirit, Wacha Kodesh. You can say whatever you want. I'm telling you, that's your potential. You can call me in every name you will want. You can think about me whatever you want. I'm telling you, if I started my tshuva process from zero, with horrible debts even, in minus, and now I can answer to people what's going on in their houses, in their living rooms, and more than that, it's only because Hashem is telling me, you must understand. And now if Hashem is telling me that, and I really started from zero, so it can take place in every one of you as well. It only depends in your dedication, in your honesty, in the, in, the, in, the, in the intention of your heart. In that it all depends. And if you're going to say again, this crazy person is telling us those things, I'm going to tell you, no, I'm sorry. Tana Debi Eliyahu is saying, Me'id ani alai shamayim va'aretz ben ish ben isha, ben oved kochavi umazalot ben yehudi, ben eved ben ben chorin, akol al pi... Something like that. I didn't quote it 100%, but I'm pretty close. Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet, is testifying heaven and earth that they will take that oath on themselves, that what that he's saying is truth, that it's not important if you're Jewish or not Jewish, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a slave or a free person, the divine spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to receive knowledge and real wisdom of truth from source of he from heaven, from the ancient source of wisdom, from the ancient archives of, of Kedem, of the day earliest days, depends in the greatness of your actions, in how good you're going to be. You know how honest you're going to be, how kind you're going to be, how nice you're going to be, how polite you're going to be, how dedicated you're going to be to the truth. That's it. It's all about that. And Hashem is screaming the things that are so important to me, you disrespect them. And the things that you took so seriously are not so important to me. People are losing their minds because of certain things in mitzvot. You look at from people, you, you ask yourself, who are they idolizing? What's going on with them? They lost the connection with, with the Creator. Where is mitzvot ben adam lechavero? What about being nice to people? Never to rebuke, not to hate no one. Lot is night, achicha bil vavecha. Lot is night, achicha bil vavecha. You're not allowed to hate your brothers. One of your siblings, you're not allowed to hate. You're not allowed to hate. You're not allowed to hate. You're not allowed to be angry ever. Ever. Those are the things that are important to the Creator. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. That's the main part of Judaism. You want to be Jewish? Great. Now work on your midot. Work on your attributes. You want to be Jewish? You want to be nice? You want to be... 
Work on your manners. Work on your faith. Build yourself from zero. Start all over. If you really desire the truth, you need to be a humble vessel to contain the bounty of the Creator. Now, the challenge is to believe in that, that if you're going to follow Hashem, now Hashem is going to illuminate His face to you. In that you should believe. You should believe in that. You should believe that if you're trying to be honest, that's it, Hashem is with you. That if you're trying to be kind, Hashem is with you. That if you're doing the best that you can, never to rebuke, not to argue, not to scream, never to curse, never to say anything bad, not to kill people all around you, insulting people, shaming people, especially not your family, especially first of all. Put a sign in front of your eyes, in, 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 in your, on your door. It's a Jewish family lives here, that when you're going to come to the house, you're going to remember, remind yourself, they're also Jewish, they're also like, I need to respect them as well. It's not my slaves, it's not my workers, my employees, no. People, I, yes, I'm married to you, but I'm also a free person, like, where's my slippers? Who are you? Go look for your slippers. Where you put them yesterday? To be angry, it's to be stupid. Anger rests in the place of the silly people. He's calm and relaxed and, and grateful. He found a place in the silly person's life. Why are you angry? Because you're silly. You're angry. On who you're angry? You don't have no one to be angry about at. Hashem is around you, Hashem is surrounding you, Hashem is putting all of those situations in front of you only to bring you closer to Him, that you're going to wake up to see your weaknesses and your lackings, that you're going to start calling Him on every issue and issue. Instead of screaming and being angry and upset on other people, start calling Hashem and then Hashem will answer you. Got that? Hopefully, 1% got in. Yes! Thank you very much. Chazak Thank you. Thank you. Aboy Sai, we are the Muna Project, the Muna family. Heard about us? It's a very nice non-profit organization that I'm breaking my, uh, my, my, uh, my life to pieces uh, for that project. And we're doing a lot of good in the world, so we're asking you, please help us, support us. Our organization is helping many people. I just finished translating the second book that I wrote. We have the book, It's Too Much For You, and three children books that I illustrated with the help of my beloved wife and wrote them. It's stories that um, are based on the tales of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And now we're about to finish translation of the second book that I'm writing on the will of the person, on how powerful the potential of the person is. So help us, support us, if it's through the website, through all of our social media, and if it's here in the class, I can promise you on that book, it's too much for you, that it's a, it's a book of stories that I, that I collected for my uh, life journey, stories that I heard <clears throat> and composed them together into a very nice piece of, of a book. And I must tell you that for secular people, for people that are very far from Judaism, from faith, from being religious, that book can be a very, very good um, jumping board to bring them very fast into very deep water because it's a very, very modern, open and, and like modern book and it's very authentic, very Israeli and it's real stories on supervision of the Creator on, on our lives and how he's bringing people like us 
to serve him out of nowhere, from zero, from rock bottom. So uh, please help us, and Hashem will help you too. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.